Today we're looking at section 6-4 and it's talking about counting strings without replacement. So what it means is, what it means is like if I took out, I have a bag full of chips and I'm say red ones, blue ones, and green ones, say I have 15 total. I take one out but I don't put it back in and then I wanted to find the next probability, that means I'm not replacing it. So this is the type of thing we're looking at for without replacement, okay? Okay, so for like the first one, in volleyball, a team is made up of six players at a time. Three are at the net and three are behind. How many different ways are there to arrange three at the net from the six who are playing? So the first person I pick, how many do I have to pick from? Six. six. But I'm not putting that person back in. I've already taken them out of the line. So how many do I have to pick from on the second? Five. Five. How many do I have to pick from from the third? Four. So there's only three spaces that I need to look at. If I multiply these three together, I get 120 different arrangements. Okay? We are looking at three spaces. All right? Yes. Yes, but we're only, they only wanted to know how to arrange three at the net. Okay? All right, so an arrangement of teams, objects or symbols without replacement is called a permutation. That's called a combination. Yeah, this, the one with, that has the seed um, denote denoted as a combination. We say that the solution of example one calculates the number of permutations of six objects taken three at a time. In general, we say the number of permutations n of n objects taken k at a time, you can write it like this. n, p, all right, this should be an r by the way, I'm sorry I put k, I don't know why. n, p, r, okay? I know, not National Public Radio in this case. We'll now. Okay. National Public Radio. Wow. All right. So the main gist of this, in this case up here, we had six total possibilities with a permutation of three slots. So if I were to denote this one that we just did, that's how you would write it out. Okay. So down below here, we have an example of how many different six letters. Sure. No. So we had six possibilities total with three slots. That's the permutation. That's what we just found out. It's 120. So you wouldn't put six, one, two, three. So P is always going to be a P. Yep. Okay. So let's look at number two. It says, how many different six-letter strings can be formed from six letters in the word palindrome without replacement? So how many letters do we have in palindrome? Ten. Ten total letters. Okay. So we have ten P, and how many um, letters are we picking from that? Six. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to start off with ten. And I'm going to work my way down until I have six separate numbers I'm multiplying. So 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5. That's a total of six numbers, right? If I multiply that out, I get 151,200. I want you guys to take a moment and look at example 2B. Because I think you can do this by yourself at this point. Take a second, try to guess how you would set it up, and then we're going to go through it. Okay? The way I would write this out as, is a permutation of 12 total place it, paintings permutated into 8 spots. Right? Okay? So I'm going to take 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, times 6, times 5. Is that 8 of them? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So if I multiply that out, I have a total of 19 million, right? Yeah. 
958,400. That's how many different ways I can arrange them. Okay? All right, example three is interesting. Because we are trying to solve for n in this case. We don't know what n is. Not yet. So, wait, could you just do this? Do like, is like six, like blank? Can I just go like, um, like one second? I think you and I are on the right, I think you are on the same track. You can go put it on the right. I would set up this one. I'm going to have, notice that NP6 equals 17 times NP5. Yeah, so what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to solve for 17, get 17 by itself. This is different a little bit, but you'll see why I do it in a minute. So I'm going to have NP6 divided by NP5 equals 17. Okay? And the way we would set this up at this point would be you're starting off with N, right? And your next number would be N minus 1. And because just like up here, I start with 12, and I subtract 1, and I have 11. Oh. And subtract 2, I have 10. So I'm going to do that until I have six slots, as Annalise said. So I got six of them there. The yes. And then on the bottom, I'm going to do it for five slots. Same thing. What can I cancel out? Everything yeah, so all of these cancel out except for n minus 5. So I'm left with 17 equals n minus 5. Pretty nifty, huh? So solve for n. Yep, so I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So 22 is my n. Yeah, if you were going to go back and actually solve it, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're just wanting to know how many total objects I had, but I didn't know that until I did this. Okay? All right, turn the page. Yes. Okay, one of the things it says here is that if you have, say, 8P8, okay, it's just saying then that that permutation would be 8 to the exclamation point. You guys know, have you seen that before? Yeah, wait, that was in the homework. Okay, so anytime you see this, you are taking it down. So this is just saying you're going to take all 8 slots, okay? Before you were having, yeah, all the way down to 1. So this would be 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. No, not really. I mean, times 1 is itself. But that's one of your 8 slots, though. Okay? That's called factorial, by the way. That's the name for it. Okay? So that's what happens when n equals r. You would just use all, all the slots. Okay? So if you have eight slots, you would have eight all the way down to one. It's just saying if n equals r. In this case, I showed you that eight equals eight. So you would do it like this. Okay. Exclamation point means factorial. Okay? Yes, sometimes, but not, yeah. No, we're going to, I'll show you some later on. We're going to use it. Okay, so if we have zero factorial, just so you know, Zero factorial is always one. Okay, read number 4A. It says, tired of hearing his 17 students argue about who gets to be in line, a first grade teacher decides to put the, set, uh, the students in different order every time they got in line. He decides to list all the possible orders so that he will not duplicate any of them. If it takes 20 seconds to write each order, how long will it take him to finish his list? So first of all, we need to find the number of possibilities 
his orders are. And we're going to do 17P17. Yep, so that would be 17 factorial. Okay? Do they have exclamation point on top of it? Yes, they do. Is there any circumstance under which there would not be an uh, equal 17 exclamation point? Where is the M right there? Well, if I had 17 and, I, and he wanted to only pick five slots, then you would do 17 down five and times. Would you, okay, and you're kind of like, would you do 17 P5 and they're telling you the answer? Or no. Good question. Some calculators do have the um, permutation button on it. Some don't. But most of them do have the factorial button. And now, the TI-84 and all those, they do have a permutation button. You just have to look for it. Okay? Wait, but what I'm asking is like... Okay, so once you find your 17 factorial, you're going to multiply that number by 20 seconds to find out how long it is. And it ends up being really big. I don't even remember what it is. You got one of you guys want to tie it out and see? So it's something to the 14th power or something like that. It's a big, big number, okay? Would you multiply it by 20 or 0.2? By 20. Oh. Okay. Now, one thing you got to know is this is in seconds. Divide it by 60. So you could do that. Divide it by 60 and you'd find out how many minutes it would take. It would still be millions of minutes. I know. And okay, why is he doing that? Because he's crazy. <laughs> 200 million years. It might be. I think I calculated it for a little bit different number. I had 1.3 times some 10 to the something. Yeah, two point two five times. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, 4B says this: If a teacher decides to put six girls in in, in the class first, and then eleven boys, you're gonna have a different number. Yes. Yes. So, in shorthand, you could say six factorial, eleven factorial. Okay. Which is like you said. 6 times 5 times 4, so on. And then 11 times 10 times so on. Yep. Okay. And that answer ends up being, I ended up getting 28,740,096,000 different co uh, combinations. And this number ends up being much smaller then this number when you multiply out the 20 seconds. Dang. Okay? Wait, so you, you, uh, you take the product of 6 exclamation point, 11 exclamation point, you multiply. Yep. So yep, you're so multiplying. So, so 11, what if you just 11 multiply? times all the way down. Yep. Okay. Factorial. Is there a button for exponential? Yes, there is on most calculators. Obviously, you're not.